Hey Bernie and Sid, this is Michael K. Just wanted to wish you a happy first anniversary. Pretty amazing accomplishment. Being on the air in New York for a year, that's a lot. The fact that you two guys could stand each other for a year, that's a lot too. But remember, don't do what other great tandems have done and break up. It just usually doesn't work out. It will with you guys. I hope I'm around to say happy 20th anniversary. Have a great day, guys, and many, many more. That's our guy, Michael K., the great voice of the New Doc. York Yankees, as well as the host of the Michael Love K. Show, which does very well on 98.7 FM ESPN here every single day. Mike's a really good friend and a great guy. And the Yanks didn't prove to 2-2 two two last night with a 3-1 to one win over the Tigers. Vermont pitched very well. Brett Gardner hit a home run. And one of the folks in attendance there last night, as you hear this music in the background, which uh, just takes you right to a Bronx tale, is the biggest Yankee fan in New York City, the unbelievable actor, director, writer, producer, and a dear, dear friend of ours from many, many years. Froze his ass off in the Bronx last night and looking very handsome in his Joseph Aboot suit this morning, the great... Chaz Palminteri. Oh, it's Chaz. good to be here, guys. Good to be good here. To yeah, it was cool right. last night. It was cold. You but they won, so it was okay. So you warmed up. You know, um, you're wearing a, a boot stuff, and not the last time, but the time before that. Yes. I walked into a boot store, unsuspecting at 3 o'clock on a Monday afternoon. Right. And bumped into you and your very handsome son, Dante. Yes, yes. And you yes. both looked great at that uh, that big night, which was the Joseph Aboot fashion show. That's right. And then as only you would do... You're a major superstar that you are. You throw Danielle and I in your Mercedes, drive us to your unbelievable yeah. restaurant. We have an amazing dinner, and then you drove us home. That's right. I was your driver that night. How's that? <laughs> hey, by the How way, good were you doing? I was your driver. He couldn't stop talking about it the next morning, <laughs> wow, that you were driving him. Yes. I was driving yeah. him. Yeah. By the way, Chaz just showed me a video of his son playing piano. At Billy Joel's house with Billy Joel. Oh, oh Dante. Yes. Oh, he's a wow. listen. His it's son amazing. and his daughter, both of them, both of them are yeah. great musicians, great talents. Who, yeah. who, by the way, you displaced in that car? No, no. Well, the yeah. Well, his son Dante and his uh, lovely girlfriend. They took an Uber. They ended up taking yeah, an Uber. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's we were right. we were going to take the cab or right. the Uber, and Dante was like, "No, no, you're our See guest." That, the apple didn't fall far from uh, the tree. He's a good good man. Yeah, yeah, I was like a great yourself, kid. Like yourself. Man, so I spent the last three years. Yes. explaining to Bernie and Jill that as great as the movie A Bronx Tale was and as great as the musical was, and it was really, really good, I said, the best of all is the one-man show. In fact, that inspired the movie because Robert De Niro went to see a one-man show That's many, right. many years ago and said, this would be a great movie, but if you enjoyed the, the, the movie and the Broadway show, the one-man show is going to blow you away. Now I've got a witness, finally, because Jill saw it on Sunday night. She goes, you're, you're exactly right. I was blown away by how he goes in and out of character, and it, it was just the best thing I think I've ever seen. And he's the only person in the studio who hasn't seen or been a part of the one-man show, as opposed to the movie and the musical, which, both of which I've seen, and which were terrific. I can't even imagine how this could be better than those two. Well, and these two people say it is. And he's yeah. going to be back at Paramount in what day? Ju on June 23rd. The Paramount and Huntington right. Long Island. Maybe you'll come, Barry. I think I will, do my guest. commentary. I think I will. Robert De Niro said it was the greatest one-man show we ever saw. No question. I don't even think I can uh, compare a second. And, and, you know, it's funny because we get all these uh, comedians in here, right? Right. And they do the, the movies and they do sitcoms. I don't care if it's Seinfeld or Matascalco. Every one of them, their love is still stand-up. That's their passion. Absolutely. So, same thing with you. You do this one-man show, and I see it. From the moment you hit the stage, you can do Analyze This with Billy Crystal. You can do a movie with the near... That is your passion. Well, the one-man the one man show, 18 characters, that's my love. I mean, yeah. I love doing theater, and I enjoy doing it. Well, tell the story of. about how you ended up writing that thing, too. That was well, fun. I ended up because I was working at a, as a, door, a doorman one day because I ran out of money, and all of a sudden, this guy came over to me and said, let me in, I'm late. Come on, let me in. And I said, hey, take it easy. And he says, don't you know who I am? And when a guy says that to me when I worked the door, I used to say, yeah, you're the guy who's not getting in today. <laughs> <laughs> was it, this at the Copacabana? No, it was at a place called uh, 2020 in Beverly Hills. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was the fanciest place in Beverly Hills. 
And he looked at me and says, you will be fired in 15 minutes. I said, get online. Everybody tells me that. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I heard the owner go, Swifty. And it was Swifty Lazar. And for those of you who don't know, Swifty oh, Lazar yeah. was the biggest agent sure. in the world at the time. And I just told him he can't come in <laughs> to, his, to his own party. It was his party. <laughs> he was the guy with the big glasses. And the big glasses. Yeah. And it was I was his fired. party? It was his party. That's why he was so, because he was late. And right. 15 minutes later. I got fired. <laughs> I, I went home and I sat there and I said, what am I going to do with my life? I said, you know what? If they won't give me a great part, I'll write one myself. And I got five tabs of yellow paper and I started writing about this killing that I saw when I was a kid. And it, uh, 10 months after 10 months of writing, I performed the one man show and my life skyrocketed. And that wow. was it. And so again, June 23rd, Paramount, Huntington, Long Island. But also, and this is within the sound of our voices, it's uh, April 12th at the State Theater, and I believe it's Eastern Pennsylvania. Eastern Pennsylvania. Oh, the, the home State of Larry Theater. Holmes. East, uh, Jill, right. wrote, Jill wrote it as Eastern Pennsylvania, no, no. but Eastern. I'm sure it's, it's right. Eastern. E-A-S-T-O-N. East, yes. East, 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 right. Holmes right. has his bar there. The, the, the State Theater, April 12th. It's a nice place. So this, this play, though, is you. Like, people always ask me, is that, was that character, little C, was that Chaz Palminteri? Yeah. Did yeah. that guy Sonny yeah. really exist? Yes. And it all did, right? Yes. My name is Colodro Lorenzo Palminteri. That's my name. I mean, I'm C. I'm Very, Jewish. Yeah. C. Very Jewish. Very Jewish. <laughs> Collegero. You know, I got to tell you guys, seriously, and I, I want to say this. Be, be, it's very important to me. You, this is your first year, and they say the first year is the hardest. Right. It's always the hardest. Right. But people are always saying you guys are funny, and they're right. They're saying you guys are smart, and they're right. But the real key that makes this show work, I got to tell you, is that you guys are extremely likable and lovable. Wow. And that is the key. You can be smart, you can be funny. But if you're not likable, people don't want to turn you on in the morning. They want to like the people they listen to. It's like friends. Yeah. I want to listen to my friends in the morning. Yeah. And I, really, that's the key to your success. Now, you're making oh, us blush, you. but you couldn't tell what Sid because he's so tan. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I'm turning big red. That, that, thank you, Chairs. That's very sweet. Oh, that no, is really no. sweet. What, that's coming from you. And that's what we try to do. We, you know, we'll talk about our families often. Yeah. We'll talk about things that happen with our kids. And I think what what does separate us, and you just said it better than I can. But I think we're relatable. We don't live in a in a big uh, exactly. ranch in Texas or a big house yeah. necessarily in Manhasset. Quite frankly, we don't get paid that much. No, we're just regular oh, guys. <laughs> no, we don't. No, but but you're likable. People want. Believe me, it's like when you're not on the air. You know what it's like. It's like it's like a drug that's not there no more. Where are they? Oh, well, my God, where, you know what's oh. going on? Like on the weekend, you go, "Where's Bernie and Sid?" You know, yeah. I'm telling you. That is. It's like you that's put it so on nice. in the morning. You drive to work. I go, ah. Oh. I could drive, there's oh. traffic, I go, I'm good, man, I'm, I'm good. This, this I'm coming good. from a guy that I will know. go to the upper deck at Yankee Stadium, find some kid. I did it last night. And hand him a baseball, you did it last night against last the Tigers. Night again. Wow. Tell us that story, too, it's great. What I do is, I used to, I used, my father used to take me in the third deck, because that's all we could afford, and we would watch, I get very emotional. But anyway, he would take me there, and uh, he would always say, you know, I, I, I'm sorry we can't sit down. I said, Dad, Dad, come on, you know. And now, from now on, every time I go to the game, I get a couple of balls from the Yankees. They give me a few balls. I go up to the highest deck where I used to sit with my dad, and I find a kid, a, a boy, or, or even a girl, so a little, you know, yes. standing there being with their father and their parents. And I go over to them and I say, hey, I used to sit up here, you know, but I want to give you a ball. Because you can't get a ball up there. It's ridiculous. Right, 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 right. And I would sign my name and I Gosh, give the kid oh, the wow. ball. That is so sweet. And it's like I gave the kid a diamond. Yeah, yeah sure. I, I'm, I would imagine yeah. the kid would feel that way. Chez's yeah. dad, of course, drove the uh, number 12 bus number across 12 bus. Fordham Road in the Bronx, just like my father did years, That's all right. those years ago. Oh, yes. My father, Lorenzo, a good man, a great man, and, uh, and I, he was, uh, you know... That is, that's a moving story, and, uh, yes. and, and, and I'm not surprised to hear that because you are that kind of a sweet, charming guy. And that, well, type, of, that type of father himself, by the you way. Know, yeah, and and I've been doing father. it for years, and I never said anything until Sid yeah, right. said, why don't you tell people that? He goes, and I said, Sid, I don't know. He goes, no, 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 I'm going to. And after Sid did it, I said, you know what, I should say it because. It's inspiring. It, it is, it, it really a, is. It's a dedication to my parents. You, 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 nice. you made me cry. And Joseph, and again this morning when he told me that story, it's beautiful. Yeah. Was your dad. Uh, 
still alive when you made the movie? Oh, yeah. My father saw all my success. He saw all of it. Yeah, he died. In, he was 91 when he died. He Sorry. died about seven years ago. My mother was 97. Wow. You know, she was yeah. So they saw all my success, and they were always very proud. Was your father happy with De Niro's performance? Did he oh, he, very happy. He was. He, yeah. My father and De Niro hung out for a month because De Niro said to him, wow. he said, hey, listen, uh, you know, I really want to pick up your ra- mannerisms. And my father said, Bob, you know, no, nobody, right. nobody knows me. He right. goes, no, 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 no. And my, and De Niro picked up all his mannerisms. My father taught De Niro how to drive a bus. Wow. <laughs> and and no you kidding. you were originally going to play that part because De Niro wanted to play the part of Sonny. No, and you're no, like, if no. I do this, I'm only playing that part, right? Actually, actually, said De Niro never wanted to play okay. Sonny. It was always from the beginning. He said, Chaz, I know you want to do Sonny. You'll be oh, great wow. as Sonny. And I'll play Loretta, and I'll play wow. the father. Wow. And did you film that up in Belmont or in Astoria, Queens. Queens? I couldn't do it in the neighborhood because I would have too many partners. Buddy. Right, right, right. You know, all the wise guys would have said, hey, where's <laughs> my kids? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I said, no, I no, no. We can't do it over <laughs> no, there. No. And we got the real Eddie Mush to be in the movie. You oh, did? No kidding. That no. was the real guy? That was, the, that was Eddie Mush. We couldn't <laughs> wow. find Eddie Mush to play the part. Put him in the bed. So De Niro said, why don't we find the real one? Let's go up to the neighborhood. <laughs> we went up to the neighborhood. I said, Bob, if he's anywhere, he's, st- he's by the where the bookmakers are. We went there. There was Eddie Mush. Unbelievable. Right there. Wow. I said, Eddie, come over to the car. I said, Bob De Niro was in there. He goes, Bob De Niro, get out of here. Come over to the car. He goes, hey, listen, I owe a lot of people money. <laughs> I'm not walking over to no car. I said, Eddie, please. He walks over to the car. He knocks on the window. De Niro puts down the window. And he goes, Bob De Niro, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> so De Niro says to him, Mush, I want you to come Monday. I want you to read for the part of Eddie Mush. Wow. He goes, you want me to read for He goes, yes, come Monday and read. And, and Mush says, what time? He goes, 12 o'clock. He goes, listen, can I make it 3 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> He's telling Bob De Niro. And Bob said, why? why? I love that. Hey, why can't you come? And Mush goes, I got to catch the double. That I Ackman figured the goes, track. I knew ah. it. I knew it was going to be the track. What I knew it. Great story. Eddie, listen, oh. I got to tell you guys. Yeah. The people of the Columbus Association, everybody told me to tell you, it's because of you guys, while the Columbus statue has been given a landmark status, they told me specifically, I'll show you the text this morning, specifically, tell them. Thank you so much for supporting the Columbus statue. Uh, wow. The one up in, in, in uh, Columbus wow. Circle, which wow. de Blasio was going to yeah. take down. Yes. And, uh, yes, we went through that uh, about six months ago. Two years you. ago for the Columbus State Parade. Who was your friend that came With to Phil you? With Phil Foley, you told Phil. me. That's, That's right. That's guys. right. It wasn't that long yeah. ago. Yeah. He, was, yeah. he said, tell them, please. It was because of them. It was, of course, that they did this. Well, let me just, let us just say this. We love you. You have been a dear friend of ours for a long time. In my worst days in Miami, you were there for me all the time. I never had to text you twice, ever. Uh, And you've been a great friend of ours, too. So we love you. And we're so happy you're here today. And you're invited to my restaurant, Chaz Palmateri's, anytime. On me. On me. Uh, It's a great place. Listen, the Bronx Tale, June 23rd at the Paramount in Huntington, Long Island. Go check it out. Rave reviews from, from this studio. And also, April 12th. State Theater, Eastern Pennsylvania, the great Chaz Palminteri in the Bronx Tale. Listen, again, we love you. Thank you so Thanks much, Chaz. Right, we'll take a short break. More on Bernie and Sid.